Hello there, everybody. This is Thavius Beck, and I'm back with another course to discuss one of the newest instruments that has been unveiled in Bitwig Studio 2.3, which is Phase 4. Now, I'm going to load up the Phase 4 instrument and uh, just kind of give you a brief little overview of it before we dive into detail. So I'm in the pop-up browser. I'm looking at instruments, Bitwig device, and over here I can see Phase 4. So let me select this and hit OK. Phase 4 is a very interesting synthesizer because this creates sounds using a completely different method of synthesis than what we get from Polysynth or FM4. The Phase 4 synth utilizes phase distortion and phase modulation, which we'll be discussing in more detail in the next two videos. The main thing is that this gives you a lot of opportunities to shape your sounds in some very, very unique ways. Now, what I will show you really quickly is that with the Phase 4 instrument, we can hit a button. I'm going to click this button here. And now I can make this synth full screen. Now, this isn't just a cosmetic thing. There's actually a few extra features that we'll see when we make the uh, instrument full screen, specifically uh, some options related to the voices and voice stacking. But this gives us a good chance to see how the waveforms are changed and manipulated as we introduce more phase distortion and phase modulation. But really quickly, just a quick overview. Uh, if we look down here in this area, we have four identical oscillators, uh, and these are named based on the color. So we have oscillator R, which is red oscillator B, which is blue, uh, oscillator Y, which is yellow, and oscillator M, which is magenta. Each one of these oscillators can generate uh, a series of different waveforms. I should say one of a series of different waveforms, which can be changed here. If I click and hold, I can drag this up and down. If I just play one note right now, what I'm currently hearing is the output from oscillator R. The reason why is because as we look at all these different controls here, this knob determines if the oscillator is audible or not. And this is the only one that actually has its volume turned up. We can see oscillator B is all the way down, Y is down, and M is down. If I adjust the master output of this oscillator, we can see it disappears. Now, if we look up here at the top, we can see what kind of waveforms being generated by these different oscillators. Since we're just focusing on oscillator R, let's look up here in the upper left corner where we can see the waveform. Now, the waveform type that I chose, it's a sawtooth, and we'll discuss some of these in a bit more detail. I'm actually gonna change this to a sine wave just to keep it really simple. So I click hold and go to sine. Now we see the shape here, this doesn't really look like a sine wave, and the reason why is because this parameter here, this mod parameter is up. This means that we're getting some phase modulation happening. I'm gonna turn this all the way down. And you can see the shape of the waveform change. Still doesn't look like a sine wave yet. I'm going to adjust the shape here. This is what introduces phase distortion. This will distort the shape of the waveform. That's why it doesn't look like a sine wave. So let's reduce this. And there we go. So now we're back to the original wave shape. So the beauty of this instrument is that we can utilize all these different oscillators to uh, distort or modulate the phase of the other ones. Uh, we can also do some self-modulation. I could basically use the output of this waveform to uh, modulate or distort the phase that is coming from this particular oscillator. There's a lot that can be done, but the main thing I want to make clear is that uh, even though this interface looks a bit intimidating, once you realize what the different parameters do, it's actually pretty simple to approach and gives you a ton of flexibility. So with that said, let's dive in and understand what phase modulation and phase distortion really means. 